Hello YouTube, this is Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle and today is a currently reading subscription box haul situation. So let's start off without any further ado because I do think this is going to be a slightly long one. So first of all, I'm still reading uh, War and Peace with Victoria from Eve's Alexandria. I am currently 992... 922 pages I have this element to go I'm very impressed that I have gone this far through the book thoroughly enjoying it thoroughly enjoying the experience of doing um, a buddy read never done that before with somebody through since I've started my YouTube channel I did do it before with the pre uh, previously with a friend of mine who's very much into fantasy and sci-fi um, and I really missed that. I, I actually enjoyed having somebody to sort of talk about the various characters and the plot and the direction of the stories. And yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. So hoping to finish it soonish. The aim was by the end of May. We've got the long bank holiday weekend. <clears throat> I do think that might be possible. I'll apologise in advance if my voice goes croaky. I've had a chest infection this week. It's not the arc midwinter, I do assure you. I've got thick clothes on to kind of keep my my lurgy from coming back now that it's finally fending its way off. Also, I've been reading this week uh, The Persephone by Annie Lee. This came uh, along with an order that I placed, which I should be showing you shortly, and an absolutely beautiful bookmark of one of the fourth, uh, future coming books in that print, which I'm actually using to secure my pace. Um, I've only got a couple of little articles left to go, but I think it's fantastic considering it's free, and when you continue to purchase from Persephone, they will continue to provide that. So the next book that I'm currently reading is uh, Southern Girls. I'll insert a picture here. I can't quite remember the name of the lady. That's written it, but I believe it's her debut. I will be doing a, um, a book blog. <clears throat> I can't remember what they call it. A book blog tour on the 12th of June in regard to it and I also will have a copy of the book to be given to you guys as an opportunity as a giveaway by the publishers which I think is very very generous of them so watch this space that will be coming up shortly <laughs> uh, that's Drogo uh, also with Persephone books when I got my little delivery they sent me this beautiful beautiful postcard don't you just love things like that as a bookmark they're just fantastic, aren't they? You can't fault them. I'm such a geek. Anyway, obviously I've shown you these before, but also come in handy for keeping your very, very beautiful books protected while you're reading them. And the next one that I'm planning on reading after finishing Southern Girls is This Beauty. And this is Maman. What Are We Called Now? by Jacqueline Mesnil Amar. And it's about um, a young Jewish child um, during wartime and their trials and tribulations. They're basically hiding their identity and um, sounds absolutely amazing. Took one look at it and just knew I had to read it. Uh, I believe uh, it was described as um, being, you know, the most beautiful piece of writing so I'm really really looking forward to that that's next on my list of after Southern Girls the next purchase that I got was another I got three Persephone so this is the second one and this is an interrupt an interrupted life the diaries and letters of Etty Hilsom 1941 to 1943 I did have my eye on this for some time but Simon at Savage Reads, I wholeheartedly blame this purchase on you. Um, I saw it on his channel and it reminded me that I did have a starter list for my collection of Persephone books. 
and that was one of them so I've got that obviously again comes with the lovely uh, bookmark and the inside protective cover and the lovely end papers so absolutely stunning <clears throat> can't believe that at the price that they sell for £13 there are more of these stunning type books around um, blows me away blows me away and last but not least is Green Banks by Dorothy Whipple. Again, this was on my list. Um, I very much am interested in the World War II era from all angles, um, all different aspects and, and all the countries. More on the people side than the military, although I have read a lot about the military side as well. Um, Anthony Beaver's Stalingrad was a big chunkster that I remember re reading a fair fair while ago and uh, yeah so it's quite obviously there's quite a few documentaries and things on World War Two as well so it's something that I I do keep aware of I think it's something that we need to constantly remind ourselves is a worst case scenario and sometimes with some of the things that are happening in this world at the moment you know you need that reminder you need that wake up call we do not want to get to that point but before i get on my political uh soapbox the next books that i've got are two books that were kindly sent to me by publishers uh the first one is the plague charmer by karen maitland and this is a hodder title now, um, some of you may have read The Vanishing Witch and The Raven's Head. I haven't. I've actually got The Vanishing Witch on my Kindle and it's fallen into that terrible circuit of it's on my Kindle with hundreds of books that I need to read and just haven't got round to. Um, so I really must read that one, but also I really want to read this and the, the, the premise behind it sounds absolutely amazing. So I'll just read it to you. 1361, an unlucky 13 years after the Black Death, plague returns to England. When the sickness spreads from city to village, who stands to lose the most and who will seize this moment for their own dark ends? So it does sound really, really good. And I really like that cover. I don't... Well, I, lo I love the colour purple, so that's part of it. But there's something about the sort of the eel going through the skull, and I'm assuming it's an eel because it's London, um, random, I know, and the next book I've got is a, a Hol uh, Mulholland books through Hodder, and this is We Were Kings by Thomas O'Malley and Douglas Graham Purdy, and this says, in 1950s Boston, the best way to survive is keep your head down and your mouth shut, but Cal and Dante prefer to do the right thing, not the sensible one. So I believe that this is a set of cousins who are looking into a gangland killing. They were asked to look into it by the police and their kind of um, involvement and decline, not necessarily decline, but their involvement and entanglement in, in the uh, gangland situation based in Boston at that time. So, Mystery Box appeared... <laughs> yesterday kindly signed for by my neighbor i have pre-opened it so we don't have to rustle rustle on screen although there will be some rustly 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 on screen ah now i had completely forgotten i pre-ordered this i ordered the first one and i've shown it on this channel before and i haven't how many times do we say that? But I haven't had a chance to read it. I do plan on reading it. I am coming very close to a severe ban. I was supposed to be shelf slamming this year. Confession of a booktuber. Epic fail. <laughs> so uh, this is Alison Weir's next book in the Six, uh, Six Tudor Queens dynasty and this is Anne Boleyn a king's obsession so this is the story obviously of Anne Boleyn and yeah uh, we all know uh, a majority of us will know 
the story behind Anne Boleyn. She was the mother of Queen Elizabeth I. She was deemed to have um, slept with her brother. She was beheaded by Henry VIII and very much was kind of complicit in her own downfall to some extent. Um, but a very, very interesting character. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy anything Tudors. And so this will be great. I have been reading the Philippa Gregory ones as well. And last but not least, yay, my moth box turned up today. Again, went to Royal Mail's delivery depot. What a trek. But eventually I got there and we won. So this is interesting. Um, I love these books. Uh, Mercy from Mercy's Bookish Musings is phenomenal. Her channel is amazing. Her books that she selects are amazing. She's recently made an announcement that she is going to return back to just doing the novel boxes for the time being, primarily because um, she wants to set up a subscription service. And I can understand and fully appreciate that when you're working and trying to put a business like this into place, there's a lot of work that has to go in to enable people to go online and subscribe and buy her, her book boxes. I can tell you now, I will definitely be one of her first subscribers to her boxes. They're amazing. They always seem to find authors that I've not heard of or to push me or to challenge me. And I love that. There's something about it that I just love. And I have recently bought her short story box and uh, I shall be eagerly anticipating that return at some point. So the little card on the back this month says... This month's box features two widely different novels. One of them is an intensely emotional family drama with some shocking twists and turns. The other is a very bizarre mystery story. So what connects the two books? Well, at their heart, both of them are about the differences people can make to one another, the good and the bad. <clears throat> now, they also come with a beautiful bookmark which I'm not going to read the the quote on the back but the bookmark always relates to the book in question and we'll try and undo the twine I knew I should have done that before last time it was so straightforward I just sort of did a slide here and a slide there and it came straight off this month not so much. Yay. Right. Okay. So this is the first one. And I don't know if this is the family one or the drama. So let's have a look. Oh, a stunning cover. And funnily enough, I was just looking at this book today. Sorry, Russell, Russell, Russell. I was just looking at this book today and it was a really, really stunning cover. Now this is by Seren Books. And the cover was actually illustrated by Clive Hicks Jenkins. And I do want to state that a bit more often because, you know, if you want to go and check out an artist's other work, you know, they are artists. Some of them aren't just illustrators for book covers. They do do other work. And I really want to promote people to go and take a look and see if there's something you like on a book cover it could well be that you could get a print for your home of something equally as beautiful that has been done by that artist um yeah so this is starshot by mary ann constantine and it says this is this is so this is the mystery one so it says Part fable, part mystery, Starshot is a poignant debut novel set in Cardiff in a time that is almost but not quite our own as their paths cross in a circumscribed world of benches, parks and galleries. A handful of characters reveal stories of obsession, loss and recovery, creating a fragile network of relationships which will help to resist the inexorable channels of silence eating into the city. Wow. Wow. That sounds fantastic. I'm not going to sniff the book on air, I promise. But wow. And it's just over 200 pages, so a nice size. So this one must be <clears throat> the family drama. I'll put the bookmark with the book it relates to. And uh, this 
see how we get on with the twine. I'm doing it off screen because it's probably bad enough that you're seeing my face trying to tangle with the paper. Okay. And also, I have to say, I am a big purchaser of books. But the reason why I don't buy certain books is because I know that Mercy is going to, Mercedes is going to come up with some phenomenal different authors and also different publishers. So um, I will expand on that. But so far, because I've been getting such different books through the subscription box, I haven't yet hit a duplicate, which is fantastic. This one is called Ties. And it's called, um, sorry, it's called Ties, and it's by by Domenico Stranone. Sounds Italian. Uh, Domenico Stranone. Starone. I completely put that in a mucking fuddle, didn't I? Apologies. So this says this is a slim, intimate novel, deftly undoing contemporary gender constructions as well as timeless notions of truth, fidelity and sacrifice. Okay, and it's the winner of the Bridge Prize for the Best Novel 2015. It's published by Europa Editions. And it's a translated fiction uh, with an introduction by Jumpa Lahiri. So yeah, I think it is in Italian. book ties is a story of a marriage i love the fact that it's got french flaps sorry before i carry on ties is the story of a marriage like many marriages like many marriages oh. this one has been subject to strain to attrition to the burden of routine yet it's survived intact or so things appear i'm not going to read the whole of it I don't like to spoil myself, but that sounds amazing. So, BookTube, last but not least, down to my question. I've been rambling on for a while. I really appreciate you um, joining me and bearing with my croaky throat and some of my <clears throat> vocal issues today. So, my question is, or, or my uh, thought process is, I would like to mix up some of the things that I do on my channel. And I know a lot of people do some, a lot of people like book hauls, a lot of people don't like book hauls, a lot of people like reviews, a lot of people don't seem to like reviews. What kind of things would you like to see from me? I'm not a big YA reader. I know I've probably not got a large YA reading following. Um, I think thank you actually is one of the first things I should say because I think I've just gone over a hundred uh, subscribers which is lovely and I love you all I really appreciate that um, but is there anything particular you want me to do do you want me to do more tags I do get tagged in things um, but I don't know if that's something that you guys want to see. Do you want me to focus on some of the authors that I've loved? Would you like me to go back and do a bit like Victoria E's Alexandria and show you some of the childhood books that I love? Um, what would you like to see from me? That's the first question. The second question is, or it's more a favour, the second one is, I would really, really love to be pointed into the direction of booktubers that predominantly focus on historical fiction, literary fiction and um, thrillers and and yeah more sort of psychological thrillers and thrillers uh, less so horror although I don't mind if they do a little bit of horror as well that's fine but generally um, any booktubers that you think might be suitable to, to that side of things. I think I've got um, a few, I've got sufficient YA coverage to, to hit the books that I want to sort of really see through YA. So it's a, um, any booktube channels that you think 
would be really really um interesting for me to peruse and um i if you're interested in in finding out what i'm currently who i'm currently following on on uh, youtube in the way of booktubers then also that's something that i can do as a video if you would be interested so let me know in the comments down below anyway this is now over 20 minutes i do apologize but it is a once in a week video uh, i do have uh, two books on their way to me over the weekend but i shall leave them for another time so i'll speak now speak now <laughs> i'll speak soon booktube i hope you have a lovely weekend i hope the weather turns a bit nicer for us all um in britain for the last two days it has been torrential rain or at least where i have been in uh hertfordshire in the south of um south of england and uh yeah i look forward to hearing your thoughts and chatting to you in the comments down below take care for now bye